Hello, we're here. We're online. I hope everything works. And uh, welcome to a new dive in life. Uh, it's exciting to be back. Um, I've actually made a plan for, for the coming month, or actually two months. I've got lots of exciting people joining me. So um, we're gonna go um, today. We're gonna start with Johannes. And uh, yeah, the coming weeks are crazy. I've got Jos Butler joining us. Kreuzinger Collective, Luna Ludmilla, so also the women are represented. And um, the concept is the same. The first uh, half hour, I'm just gonna show you something. Today I'll be showing you Grain Scanner. Um, and um, then um, uh, like every other week of every week, I'll do something else and, uh, and go to the, uh, to the setup. Um, uh, to Ableton something maybe packs like I do this time or maybe like uh, making a sound in Wavetable and showing you stuff in Ableton and then the second part will be uh, together with an artist and today we have Johannes and uh, this guy's insane he makes uh, I think he made like 40 tracks already during uh, quarantine and he has like a crazy setup at home uh, he's a longtime friend so I cannot wait to, to speak to him uh, I see we have a lot of people already watching Lydia's here as well. Super nice. Welcome. And uh, great, everybody's joining. Max, there, cool. So great that uh, that you're all are, are joining uh, me for uh, for this tour. Um, let me see how much uh, how much Lloyd that we have on here. So let's see if we can move on. We got 22 people viewing. That's great. Welcome all. Feel free to join the comments. Elma in the house. <laughs> unknown is in the house. That's ooh, cool. unknown. There's also people called unknown these days. <laughs> Elma is the, the neighbor. She's also in the house. <laughs> That's cool. Great. So, um, yeah, as I said, we'll have Johannes the second hour. Um, first uh, of the second half hour. First half hour, I'm going to show you um, Grain Scanner, which is cool. Also, let me switch to Ableton. Uh, we have here... Um, of course, or Ableton with Grain Scanner, which is a great unit, which I'll be showing you with some uh, some funky stuff. Uh, put my voice through it, and um, hey, Gerard, welcome. Gerard here too. <laughs> I believe you have a question for for Niels tonight about MIDI sync. That's cool. And um, hey, welcome, Pahan. So yeah, it's um, it's cool. We're gonna uh, talk about Grain Scanner, which is an amazing um, uh, tool from Ableton. Uh, it's in the packs. I uh, don't know if uh, any of you are using the packs, but uh, the packs are quite nice. Uh, let me check. Here, if you go to the packs in places, I have a lot of packs installed, and there's way more. Uh, and you can um, you can just install these uh, in your system. Uh, through they're in the cloud and you can just install them by going to your available packs and once you click on the available packs you see them and you can just download and install them and uh, one of them is grain scanner which I'll be uh, introducing to you today um, if you go to the website of Ableton there's like actually a lot of those uh, units oh this is my my restream always good to see how many people are watching how many are there nice 30. <laughs> oh, hey Sunny, welcome. <laughs> Niet schelden vandaag, hè? <laughs> I'm, not allowed, I'm not allowed to, to use curse words. You never know. Maybe, maybe it, it all goes wrong with the stream and you hear me curse, but I don't, don't think so. <laughs> welcome, Sunny. Great you're all here watching. Um, yeah, so if you're on the side of Ableton, you can go to Packs up here. And um, yeah, there's like loads of these units. Um, a lot of them are free actually, so you can download uh, a lot of them uh, if you're logged in into your account, which you can do up here. Uh, you can check these packs, there's amazing sounds here, special textures. Zero euro, buy now, so that's, <laughs> that's cool. I guess you should buy it right now because it's zero euro, this is great. And um, yeah, Grain Scanner is there, uh, it's a paid uh, pack, but it's uh, a really good purchase, which we'll see in a bit. Um, yeah, there's lots of them. Some are, are coming with suites, like you have here, the probability pack, which is amazing actually also. I should do a, a, a show on this as well. Like uh, maybe next week I'll can show you the probability pack. Hey, William, welcome. On time. 
So uh, yeah, maybe next time I show you the probability pack. Um, yeah, there's creative extensions for Max for Life, which are also great. Uh, jump and swing. There's so much stuff here. So I don't know if you, anybody anybody's using the packs already. If you're maybe you have a favorite pack, let me know in the chat if you have a favorite pack and something we should check uh, pack wise. <laughs> Mm. Also, surround panner is really nice. Um, you can have like multiple um, outputs on your sound card going to different speakers in your room, which is great. Also, very uh, um, it's recommended to to install that one. Uh, convolution reverb is cool. So everybody who has suite should really get it. Um, it's nice, and uh, yeah, getting an occasional pack is cool. Just uh, installs really easy to your uh, to your system, and you can just um, go go all out in, uh, in Ableton so that's super nice so yeah then grain scanner it's uh it's an awesome tool like I have it here let me um, switch to Ableton here hey Lan welcome hi Lan is on YouTube yeah you can check um, on YouTube or Twitch or Facebook uh, any of the three platforms um, also, there's um, uh, a new Lessons in Life website being built. It uh, will be online on Saturday, which is cool. There will be tutorials there as well, links to my YouTube channel. So um, I also make tutorials and all the diving live streams will be available on, uh, on uh, YouTube as well. Um, I will launch some sample packs and some preset packs as well soon. So that's nice because people have been asking me during the live streams, like, hey, can we have these sounds that you were making? And I said, yes, I'll put them in a pack and uh, make them available. So these are coming as well. Um, ah, unknown just switched to live 10 sweet two weeks ago. Show me those packs, baby. <laughs> yeah, we'll do these. These packs are crazy. I don't know who unknown is, but uh, uh, yeah, I'll definitely show you some packs. Uh, uh the grain scanner pack to beginning to begin with. Um, so yeah, let me just uh, start this guy. So if you have grain scanner, I don't know, is, is anybody out there who has grain scanner? It has an amazing amazing tools but if you have a uh, grain scanner let me know it's a super nice tool so this is grain scanner you can find it here in packs this grain scanner amazing noises there are some um, oh, there are some presets here you can you can go to presets got all these these sounds that you can browse through which are nice actually you can find effects and all kinds of experimental stuff piano and keys even you know you can make anything with granular synthesis uh, because grain scanner is a granular synthesizer. Um, granular synthesis is basically like sampling, but it's uh, it's just taking little bits of the uh, sample, just tiny little bits, which you call grains. Uh, they're often like within a few milliseconds, like one to maybe uh, 100 milliseconds, and um, and there, yeah, it will. It, you can scan through the audio and therefore it creates all kinds of weird sounds. You can stack those grains on each other to create all kinds of waveforms basically. And it's it's super cool. And grain scanner is like the next level. We used to have the, um, um, what's this, the granulator here, granulator two. It's great, you know, you can use granulator as well. But for me, grain scanner is like an extra notch up the, the whole thing. Hey, K-Mail, this must be, this must be Yaron Nora Q tuning in. Why, why are you calling unknown? I don't know why people have unknown to the name. That there's something going wrong in the stream. <laughs> but anyway, j -Rod. <laughs> So yeah, the, the grain scanner is super cool. Uh, what it does, it has a few, um, a few options. So like the grains that you have, you can set the duration of these grains here. So if I, uh, let me put the gain down. I don't want to make you deaf. If I press a note here and I change the duration, it's looping the, the grain uh, longer or, or shorter. And shorter ones usually create some kind of new sort of tone, but the longer ones are, are like making more loopy kind of ambient uh, stuff. If you make it really slow, that's really cool. And uh, <laughs> unknown is incognito. <laughs> and the um, uh, the layers actually are a sort of a unison control, or they add more voices. So that if you hear, if you listen to it, make it a bit shorter, like here. And then the layers. You can make it really big, and uh, and actually it it, uh, it it can be quite CPU intensive, but it, you can make it really big if you. Do it all the way, it, it comes really loud. That's super cool. Um, so yeah, the duration makes the grains longer or shorter, which is really cool to do. Hey, Niels, welcome. 
<laughs> There's a lot of people called unknown also. Hi Camille, I'm here with you also. That's great. <laughs> Everybody's called unknown, so I don't know your names. That's horrible. Some people do come through. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because people that are on my group might be coming through as unknown. Anyway, great you're here. Have fun. Just showing grain scanner. If you have grain scanner, let me know. Uh, it's great, great unit. So uh, this duration, you can say how big the grains are. And with this unit, you can actually um, follow the key. So if I place lower, and it's actually super cool that, and the higher you go, the higher you go, the faster it will be. So it's like a keyboard following for your, uh, for the grains basically and there's also a random uh, variation that every time it does a, a different um, uh, different setting so you can choose very uh, randomness a randomness is really cool I will speak to Johannes about it as well he uh, he uses a lot of variations like random stuff in his uh, electron machines which is cool you know everything that has to do with probability or or randomness is cool in electronic music it makes your music be uh, be a bit more I don't know uh, unpredictable so to speak um, so the layers also have a variation, so you can do random variations of the layer, so every time you get a different sound. And it does that all by itself, basically. Uh, you either have um, the, the, yeah, then you have the pitch, so you can, you can have the pitch go down or up. And the pitch can also, now I have it on key follow, so it means it will go to the, the closest uh, key that I press. So if I press a G, it will actually go towards a G. So you can play in the scale and you know what you're doing, basically. Um, and also, there, this is a quite a cool feature. You can set like the semitones, let's say 12, to an octave, and it will jump. And like this, it's a bit ridiculous because it's actually jumping from 1 till 12 and everything in between. But if you put this guy, I don't know, SP, what is it? S SP, I don't know what it stands for. But if you press it, it will... It will jump up and down how you want it. Up. So it will jump up and down... Uh, per uh, octave you can also put seven here like like uh, a more suitable kind of uh, distances like seven which is a fifth or a 12 which is an octave these are nice to put in there and then have this on i'm going to leave it off for now just leave this one on put this like this and then uh, the position is cool because uh, and that's where the grains are really cool because now it's just a static loop of one grain basically and some layers of that grain but if you start moving the position uh, it's actually going through the whole. It's moving through the whole uh, sample, and the position is where it starts. Actually, you can also select some time, so you can select some time here, and it then zero percent is is zero, and hundred percent will be the end of your selection, which is cool. And by having your position somewhere, you can actually use the scan to, yeah, to because by by doing position like this, you can go through the through the whole thing. Uh, let me select the whole, so you can go through the whole sample. But it's actually it's maybe nicer to say like you know what I want want this to to be automated. So if you have it on like on one hundred percent of on zero percent, the scan doesn't really work. It just stays. But if you put it up, it will start moving through it. And there you get really cool, cool, interesting, uh, interesting features. Maybe it's cool if I take like the lessons in life. I recorded myself actually. Lessons in life. So lessons in that's life. Me. That's me. That's like uh, kind of promotion here for my <laughs> for my brand. So this is okay. So this is super cool. So let me select this bit. Like so, I have always, I have always something. Let me go an octave higher. Lessons. Now you can really hear if I change the duration, like you can, you can, you can totally like, uh, like uh, mess it up. <laughs> I wanted to say something else, but otherwise, Sonny gets uh, uh, is right for me cursing on on the internet. So I'm saying 
you can totally mess it up. <laughs> so by pressing this, you can make it really experimental, but using more longer values, you will you will hear a bit more of this this stuff, of this grains. And this is cool, I sound like an alien now. And the scan, you can see, so the position determines where it starts. And actually this, this these the direction here determines if it goes only forward. Or it goes forward and backwards, which is cool. And you can do the most amazing stuff with it. With this, it just goes to the end and it sticks to the end. But there's nothing here in the end, so I need to make my selection more until it's like, so let's see. And then you hear like, so that's that's cool. You can you can actually make all kinds of uh, different variations. And also there's this um, percentage here again, which actually makes it always start. It makes it always go a bit around the starting position. So I've made the starting position here. It it will always start somewhere else. And it's just super cool. If you add more layers. And it's always finding a bit of the sweet spot, you know. So I'm going to make this position start at the, at the beginning. I, I love this. It's super cool. You can make it go extra fast. And if you actually make it more funky, you can actually say with probability again uh, up here, you can say, okay, reverse so that the chance of that a grain will be playing normal or reverse. That's this one. So it's 50% now that it's uh, reverse and the chance of the grains playing is 100%. And 100% now they're all reversed. And you, can, you can play around with this, make the chance that it's not playing all the time, that every grain is being played. Fanning variation, you can make it go left and right. And the cool thing is, of course, it's Ableton, so you can actually go to your audio effects and go like, you know what, I need a chorus, I need some reverb, you know, I need some uh, some saturation, and you can beef up that stuff already with the effects. Grain Scanner has in built-in effects, but you can also just make it a bit more cool, add some, add some more. There you go. Maybe some delay, whatever you can you can add add loads of stuff. Oh, there we go here. So that's cool. What's my mouse is tripping out. Okay, so cool. And now if you play around with the duration, you know. Well, if you want to have less ones, take the chance down to make it a bit more quiet. Other cool thing, what we get here is the gain. Of course, you can make it polyphony or mono, you know. Uh, our Q is, is, is back. Back from in incognito mode. It's great you're watching, uh, Jaron. You should use Grain Scanner. It's amazing. <laughs> it's really cool. You can play around for hours with this stuff and spend a good good evening, like, making sounds. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's, and then the amp variation also creates more, like, variation in amplitude. Um, then the grain widow is super cool. You can all these different kind of, yeah, you can say it like waveforms that you can choose for it to, to, to adjust the grains. And for some, like this, this gauss, you can, for instance, make it like, let me make, give you a bit more grains. And you can, you can choose all these different sort of like, uh, but you also have one that looks like a bit like a saw. So you can change how the grain go does of uh, how it goes over uh, with volume. Like this is more, it's like it goes like wet, and it then goes down. I don't know how to pronounce it, <laughs> but it's super cool. This one is really cool. Yeah. So yeah, just by automating this stuff is crazy, and you can use the matrix later on. I'll show you how to use the matrix. You can automate all this stuff with LFOs within the grain scanner. Um, so yeah, let's let's say um, yeah that this is like the basic interface. Um, Lydia is sending me uh, bunnies. That's cool. <laughs> You're welcome, Jaron. Of course, anytime. I'm I'm the Ableton guy, so I should bring these things up. Um, 
So yeah, the chance call. Uh, let's see. Let me find the call. See the, the amount of layers. It's also really cool if you have it just everything at normal. Maybe cool to show you as well. Just have everything. Just if you double click, it'll return to its setting. And so now, put it to hundred. Put every everybody normal. Make them left and right. That's cool. So if I move position, that's cool to do. You know, to have it like go like this. Maybe play it a bit lower. This is really cool just to have one little position and then start from a basic thing that you know and then then say like okay you know what i'm gonna scan through it very slow and now it's on plus 10 but what if we take this this will be it's a factor or so i'm not sure it's like the factor is two percent of the multiplication well you, you can yeah you can use always use info view you know I, I don't know this thing totally by heart it's just playing around a bit but this is the factor of the scanning if it's point 0.1 it will it will be like a uh um a multiple a 0 0.1 the grain precision it goes goes really slowly <laughs> see it goes really slowly This is really cool. And if you then make it a bit, the, f the faster you make it, the higher the percentage, the faster it will go. <laughs> this is cool. This is like what you hear in all these hardcore tracks, but also like in some techno tracks, you find these lessons in life. So, you know, I'll, I'll send you all the sample. And if everybody makes a track with lessons in life in there, that would be great. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's part one of this, um, this unit. Then we have the envelope which is super cool. So just an envelope, this volume envelope, you can make it go up, come up in volume, make it go on a bit longer. So now I release the button and it's still continuing. So you can actually, especially when making more tones, so if I make a duration really like a tone, this is cool maybe. See if we can, maybe we should not scan through it, just put it in one place. if I can make a normal tone out of it this is cool yeah it's not so much of a tone coming out of it maybe I should find something else I know that this uh, Norda light is super cool because I've been fiddling around with this animal for a bit so let's see Norda lights this guy so if you move this around for some reason it's not working Oh, there you go. So now I've got more of a tone, and this is normally just a stab, you know. And if you have, if you have the attack, you can say, okay, make it more of a a pad sound. So you can use the envelope just as a normal envelope. Then there's two effects built in, which is actually cool. It's the cutoff filter, yeah, which you have a dry wet for, which you need to make 100%, and then. filter it down which is cool um, then there's the morphing so you can morph you'll find this in more of the uh, EQ's of, uh, of Ableton just the morph filter which goes from low to mid to high so this is the high band this is the mid band the low band super cool so you can make it dance you know it's like a little dance you can do this. And also, this is automated, automatable. So I'll I'll show you in the, in a bit when I get to the matrix stage. It's crazy. Uh, there's also uh, depth and velocity depth, so you can actually have the filter being uh, triggered by the velocity that you play notes. So you can set it up. It's called keyboard tracking for most synthesizers. So if you're into that, um, that's cool. Lighty, that's nice. It is nice. Grain scanner is cool. Uh, then the saturator is cool. Saturator. This is a distortion unit, which adds distortion everything above of under this frequency gets uh, gets affected and if you click here it becomes an exciter and then everything above this frequency gets excited which is cool what a cool sound and then there's a reverb turn it up the low cut which is cool so Make this release a bit shorter. That's cool. The reverb reverb's quite cool, but yeah, again, you can you can build 
your own racks, you know, you can add your own effects next to it. You can even use VSD plugins like external ones after the grain scanner, which is cool. Uh, so yeah, that's it. And then we have the, uh, yeah, so that's for it for effects. Really cool. Then we have the matrix and this is where stuff gets really interesting because there's like four mods for LFOs, which actually have a sine wave that you can set the speed from here, like how fast the, the, the LFO is going. You can put it out of phase or in phase. You can sync it or free all the, all the normal stuff you would find on a, an LFO. Um, uh, if you don't know what an LFO is, make sure to find LFO. You can use LFOs to uh, modulate parameters. So what's cool? So this is number one, number two, number three. So four signal generators that I have here. So I can use these this modulator and I can say, all right, let's go to um, uh, to the matrix and say, okay, this LFO one, which is going up and down here, is like controlling this. Um, uh, where is this guy? The more filter I was controlling. That's cool. So now if I play a tone. So you see it's moving by itself. So that's cool. You can you can create all kinds of cool constructions with this with this modulator. Now you can also set a second one and say like, all right, for this one, you can use one of these uh, these things you have sample and hold as well, which is like more random kind of stuff for for those familiar with this. You also have random, which is also random, just like sample and hold, so to speak. And step, uh, it's cool. Has a step. You can randomize it. You know, you can create your own step uh, if you know what a step sequencer does. It just sends, uh, in this case, values. It's not doing any MIDI notes or anything. It's just sending values. So I have this as modulator too. I can set the speed to make it really slow or fast. So now it's going like this. I can also sync it up, you know, so it goes on the beat. So I can say, all right, I want to have it like on a, let's say one, like one bar and put, put it effect on the cutoff. So I go to the matrix, I find the cutoff. So let's play it. And then um, find the filter cutoff. Where is the filter frequency? Here you go. Filter frequency. That's it. So now this one's also going like this. And this is super cool. And then you can go make it scan a bit more. thing yeah it's it's insane what you can do i have way more sounds that i could use um uh, with vocals it's i just find it really cool with vocals as well vocals is really my favorite thing to to work with but you know you can you can create all kinds of drones with it and, and it, i would suggest you just to spend like an afternoon on such a device and just play around with any device really or any pack that you buy just make sure you you master it and you play around with it it's add loads of stuff in it it this is a, this is a, this is me saying dive in life, I believe. So, so let's just take it back. Take this back. It's being, it's being modulated like crazy. So let's, let's take these guys off. Let's say we put this to zero. That's crazy. Hey, Rollins, welcome. <laughs> My friends, Rollins from the UK. Welcome, buddy. Haven't seen you for a long time. How's guaranteed? <laughs> Making lots of music. You tuned in for Grain Scanner. Try it out, man. It's uh, crazy stuff. This is, this is insane. So yeah, here. So this is... Lessons in life. All right, so this was Grain Scanner. I see it's like uh, half past eight. I should go call my friend um, Johannes. Rollins is good. That's good to hear. Rollins, you're just in time for the for the chat we're gonna have with Johannes. If you like uh, gear, uh, like lots of hardware stuff, then um, you need to check his stuff because here we're gonna be talking to him. Let's see. Well, he's in a different, a different uh, screen. I have his pictures. I'll show you in a bit. But we're going to listen to um, Niels. I'm going to give him a call and connect him. And in the meantime, we can 
listen to his first track, which is Breakfast, which I have here. And I'm going to call on him Skype and invite him to the call and have a nice chat with him. the first track of uh, of Johannes uh, he released on R RFR records uh, Patron records the Slew Voss um, Luna Santos's label Sohaso uh, I've been knowing for many many years and uh, he's a, a real 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 studio freak and uh, uh, I have the pleasure to make to made some music with him and to play with him together for endless hours at Paradigm in, uh, in Groningen and uh, yeah I can't wait to call him uh, so uh, yeah Roland uh, if you want Join me for one of the shows. We, I'll, I'm going to give you a call. Great you tuned in. I'm going to call Niels. Let's see. Um, is it real name is Niels? Johannes is just a moniker. Well, it's also his name, I believe. So let me call him. Let's see. Connected. That's great. Let's see. Hey, David. <coughs> He's not online. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Why is he not online? Let me, let me call the guy. Hey, David. What's up, bro? David's in the house. David Hilsken. We should also do a session. Uh, he just did uh, I've got Tripping Jaguar as well soon. I don't know which week, but he's coming somewhere in June. And uh, you just released a... Um, I track right, David. Uh, send a link in the chat so people can listen to to your music. In the meantime, I'll call Niels. Connect. Hmm. He says he's online, but he's not. It's not working. Help. Great. That's better. Hey, all right. Yeah. Let me put you in the let me put you in the show. Here we go. Why don't I see you? Oh yeah, here we go. Hey, oh, I need to move this. Hello. We, <laughs> we need to switch. Wait, like this. Oh. Oh. I want to switch you. Let let me add myself in. Ah, like this. Now you're your honest. That now it's great. <laughs> Yeah, so Niels, welcome, man. I've, uh, I've Hello. Just, I, I just played breakfast. Breakfast? Yeah. What? What have you been doing there uh, last night? I, I just, I've just played breakfast. Your track, the first one. Oh really? Oh wow, yeah. really? Oh cool. cool. <laughs> All right, man. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I just, I just closed the, 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 the Facebook page when you said you were going to announce me, so I didn't get the last part you were saying. Uh, okay, no worries. I play, I played the track for a bit. I can, I can play number two as well, which is called. Did, well, how, how did breakfast came along? Was it, um, was it, uh, was it your breakfast making that track? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, and it was also like uh, the 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 first morning I had the digitax. The track is like uh, like for I think ninety percent is made on the digitax, oh, and okay. it's like the first morning I had breakfast with the digitax, and it's like a it's like a sort of dr drum and bass kind of thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's cool, very heavy. Yeah, yeah. I, I was looking actually at my roommate. He said through the window, he's like, you know, he he got the bass face. <laughs> but cool, man. Thanks for joining me for this uh, for this um, stream. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for inviting me, man. Cool. It's always nice to to have friends uh, uh, online. I think, especially in these times, it's it's cool to just uh, yeah, just to share our 
our vibes you know we're all stuck inside so let's make most of it yeah <laughs> and, man um, and uh, yeah you told me you've been making a lot of music so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> as yeah, usual good. yeah I got like a, a regular job, like 40 hours a week, and uh, we started working at home. And I uh, normally have to travel like two hours, and uh, I can like save my travel hours now and do some music in every night now. And uh, I think in like the f first two weeks, I made like 25 tracks, and I do still do like two, uh, well, okay, let's say five a week still. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 So I got like 40 tracks ready or something, and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I told, I told them already. Like, wow, this is ri ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, you yeah. also, you know, I think that one part, and if we can dive in directly, we're just gonna dive into the, the geek side of things. You know, the the setup that you have, I've seen it grow from just a a, a machine in leather to uh, <laughs> to what it's now behind you, and. Uh, and it's really, I'm really curious to see, like, or to hear from you, like, uh, how how does this, um, how is this different from using machine from native instruments? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I have to say, I, I like started with like uh, in, in in the 90s. I started with like just a few crappy synths and a crappy mixer, and and it was, it was always like a sort of nostalgia thing, you know, to like turn knobs and play keys. And even though I can't play keys, but I pretend to, you know. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, it was always such a yeah. It was like it's like a real thing for me, you know. And after I started making music uh, on a computer, uh, I sort of lost the vibe after a couple of years because I was always arranging stuff, and I, I sort of missed the feeling of like turning knobs and uh, the same as DJing, you know. It's like when you're in the flow, and you, you just yeah. go, you know. Yeah. I, I and I also love to make music like that instead of like focusing on a track for like a couple of days or whatever. I just want to spit it out and groove yeah. that shit, you know. That's yeah. Yeah, it's more more kind of kind of like my thing. And now it's like computers; they have uh, lots of controllers, and you can do like everything you can do with hardware. You can do even more with a computer now, you know. So, but I'm like an old-fashioned guy, you know. I like old Tascam mixers, and I like noise on my uh, channels. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good. Yeah, because I also I, I recently saw uh, the Loop um, uh, event from Ableton was obviously cancelled, so didn't get to go to Berlin, unfortunately, for my first Loop. And uh, there, they did this live show with um, uh, Sebastian Millard, and I know, I know, he's, he remixed you for your album um, uh, "Life in the Clouds," right? And yeah. um, he also said like that sometimes noise is good. <laughs> he's, I don't, I don't know how he said it, but I was really like, you know, he said, yeah, maybe it's, it's like wrong or so, but it's just noise, and it's noise. Yeah. It can be good. It's just what there is, and if that's what there is, it needs to be like this. You know, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's, I think, I think noise, noise, for instance, it gives a sort of tension to the music. You know that. Yeah. Uh, 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 it, it, it becomes fragile in a sort of way, and, it, and it, that's that's like an emotion, you know, when it's yeah. fragile. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, really often I'd like I I got also I like love digital stuff, you know. I got uh, especially digi digital crappy synthesizers. I got like a oh, yeah, the Casio. Stuff, you know, like the Casio stuff, and 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 yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Um, uh, we well, have stuff like that. Uh, uh, you can always like sort of uh, how do you say it. Uh, like make it make it completely your own, you know. That's yeah. also how I how I sort of build my studio. It's like every machine has like one function, you know. I have the Digitac. It's meant for sending big kicks and it does sampling. And I got like the TR8, and I only use it for hi hats. Yeah. And I have and it's like a sort of robot I built after all these years. Like every machine has a task, and uh, sometimes I delete the machine and I buy it back again after a few years because I regret it because the sound was really good or. Yeah. And after all these years, this is like a sort of setup I have now that uh, it sort of re represents my sound, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. So that's how my sort of setup came about, came along uh, yeah. after all these years. Yeah, the Novation Circuit has already been mentioned here. I think this is Gerard actually to see. Uh, I've spoken to him today. Novation yeah. Circuit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it's a cool, cool thing, yeah. Because uh, if if anybody has a question, because I know that that, that uh, Gerard will be here, that has a question about uh, the the latency. He's experiencing a lot of latency with his uh, uh, hardware. He's got one. It's it's called it has din sync, and it might just. I think it might slow down the whole chain actually. Um, so so I'm not sure. If somebody has a question, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, uh, uh, you've got a hardware. Uh -oh. 
like the, the the MIDI clock issue, like I also had a lot of issues in the beginning, like uh, getting stuff in sync and also let it, uh, that it stayed in sync, you know. Sometimes the chains were too long and uh, the sort of the signal got a bit lost. I had the idea and uh, also I had a couple of MIDI interfaces and I uh, uh, experienced that the interfaces also uh, 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 gave latency. And what, I, what I've done now, like I use the Digitact on USB and it's like the, it sends like the master MIDI to every other device. And if I think, and if I think like uh, I get a latency again, I use like another USB uh, uh, device and also send it clock uh, through USB from Logic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you still use Logic because I thought you were totally dollars now, but you you still use Logic. Yeah, well, I, the, the the only reason I uh, use Logic is like I record the stems in it. Yeah. And uh, uh, the reason is also like it gives me some sort of recall. I, I tried some like multi-tracking like, with hardware stuff, but it's like you go like 20 years back, you know, uh, you, yeah. you have to look on a small screen and yeah. I got a Mac, come on, yeah. don't be ridiculous, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, a pur I'm not a purist or, or something, you know, um, yeah. uh, the a computer is like, and we're living in 2020, so yeah. let's, let's, let's use a computer, yeah, you know. Yeah, because I thought you were, you were skipping the whole computer thing at some point, but, uh, but it's nice and it's good to have a tracker, you know, to record your, your, uh, your audios, um, yeah, just uh, the, the stems, you know, from, from what you're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Concerning the workflow, how how much do you think has changed? Because back in the day, you worked in Logic as well with machine. Uh, oh, mine. My voice is really soft. Thank you. I will up the mic. All right. Here we go. I should be louder like this. Maybe there's something with the with the mic. Hello. Am I loud? <laughs> okay. Let me know if it's if it's not right. Just type again that it's not right. That's cool. I'll sit a bit closer to Niels also. Hi, Niels. <laughs> so um, yeah, but uh, concerning the workflow, because I I remember that at some point you were using a machine a lot, which was really cool. I've never seen somebody like jamming on machine. You were always very, very already already jamming basically. You know, jamming most of your stuff. And I I do believe that the magic is there. You know, uh, for me also, I I I recorded a lot of tracks. Like the track I did on your label, um, talking with your heart, is just one jam yeah. you know and basically back in the day we were talking a lot about this you know and from my live performance i used to like yeah why not make a setup to perform live and what i saw recently of uh, uh sebastian mullard uh it's like how he p performs live is the same way he produces just record that yeah. stuff so you can yeah. grab the magic because if you look at a track for like days on end it, it just it gets uh, move the hi-hats there listen to the whole tracks oh no no the hi-hats move there yeah for me that's uh, that's uh, it's really it's, it's really tough to get through through yeah, this yeah. you know but maybe for some people that works but uh how do you consider that your workflow has changed over the years because i know you added the modular as sort of an organic like band member uh when you got the digitact and and, and the circuit you suddenly started to get this whole yeah flow uh and you started banging out tracks how did this come together basically well it, it's like uh, uh uh it began with like ditching the computer in the beginning because it's not that i didn't want to use a computer but i want to lose the visual aspect of making music mm -hmm. like uh, the arrangement stuff you know when you have like i think a lot of people can 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 agree on this that if you make a lot of music you're sort of working on the uh, the, the perfect arrangement and it doesn't exist you know because the next day you're like oh it's it needs to change and yeah yeah and it, yeah and, and it's uh, the, the visual aspect is like is, is so uh, uh, is so strong in this, and uh, I, I realize that if that if I uh, ditch this, uh, I need to listen to what I made instead yeah. of uh, look at what I made. And um, uh, it was a very long way to sort of figure out how to create uh, a track in one one flow and also record it and have some recall. Yeah. And that's the, um, why I work with like. I got a sound card and a mixer, and it's like 16 channels. And uh, every piece of gear I have has like its, its own chain. So I don't have to like, um, when I made music with a computer, I and I, for instance, I load in a kick, I always was like, oh yeah, in the end I will compress it, and in the end it will sound like this, you know? But when I uh, make a kick now, I, I want to make it sound like straight away how it should sound in the track. Yeah. So there's no, there's no uh, after work. There's no pretending it will be okay in the end. It has to be okay, like from the start, you know. You still have this DBX compressor for the kick. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on like, 
It's on this side. And oh, yeah. like, uh, ah, there's more to it. Oh, no. It's, I'm tubing and stuff. And oh, yeah. man. You, you, you became like a real <laughs> hardware, hardware guy. It's really cool to see. And I, I've really seen it come up. And I remember that you bought the DVX. I think you even brought it to one of our four guys, one cave uh performances uh back in the yeah you brought it like and every time you would switch it on yeah, like yeah, sure. the kick would get more punch for the beats like the db uh, the dbx 166 right uh, the of the 160 uh compression yeah, yeah. classic one there's also a lot of emulations from waves and uad and i tried them and it has the sort of the same kind of vibe but yeah. i'm not sure you know I, I don't dare to say that if you blindfold me that i will hear the difference but it's just i think the point that you're making is by ditching the computer and the visual aspect is that you change the interface for yourself you're like you know what yeah. i want the interface of the machine and i want to play with the machine and turn some knobs and just be able to to make a mistake right oh, oh too much of this oh too much of that but hey that sounds pretty awesome you know and when you record exactly. it and oh shit i i messed it up but then it apparently sounds maybe cooler or it is it's actually a surprise so yeah i think it's yeah. it, what you said earlier like fragile that's what it it makes it fragile, you know, it makes it not perfect. And searching for for perfection, as you say, in an arrangement is is never done, you know, it's just like life, yeah. basically. I don't want to get too deep. <laughs> but uh, if, you, if, you, if you know, if you are searching for the perfect arrangement, you'll keep on moving your break and moving your heights and oh, just a little bit more effects here or a little bit more samples there, you know, it's at some point, it, it's never done, you know, and... Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? And I think, I think also in Ableton, if you have like, uh, you can uh, uh, connect like endless, endless controllers, you know, uh, let, let's let's just take controllers for and give them a task, you know. Yeah. So you get like and you can you can uh, uh, lower the, the the light on your screen, just push record and make just a track with only the controllers, you know, where you trigger like your sounds and uh, if you like uh, got an arrangement in your head and try to make it like that instead of like drawing it and 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 putting it, it, it it's like real. There's emotion in it, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People. Like really uh, get, get get pulled into the story you're making, you know. Instead of it's like a fairy tale you yeah. created. Yeah, no, it's no, also story. yourself, also yourself. And the, the, when I recorded talking with your heart, it was just me jamming on the push. I just had push. I made this recording, and then I okay, I had all these scenes. I took my APC forty. And I just made my live setup with some with some volumes, some filters. And some effects, and I could control the effects which were going to the sense, and that was all. And I just press record, had my foot pedal to take out the low end, you know, and that's how I jammed it. I jammed it about seven times, and I think take number five or six was the best. And uh, I just, yeah. I just made a little bit of change, and not too much, you know, just the piano I needed to like put, and I put one layer from uh, Omnisphere over it, and that was that was it, you know. But I think working this way really captures the magic. Uh, we have a question, and a compliment. That's great. Can you read it, uh, Niels? Uh, no, no, I just got oh, yeah. Skype. Okay, okay, so I'll read it for you. <laughs> like a loop, uh, loop back shit, you know? Oh, so, yeah, true, yeah, true. Okay, so we have a question uh, from David Hulsken. You might know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, so, Niels, first of all, the beards suit you really well. How do you implement modular in your setup while jamming? Uh, well, uh, uh, um, the modular is like, uh, uh, how do you say it? It's also like very fragile because I noticed that my sequencer is like, uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, when I send it like a MIDI clock, it dances around it, you know? So most of the time I just keep the MIDI clock, once it's good synced, I keep the MIDI clock loading, you know? So it doesn't, it never stops, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to stop it, it takes me like uh, another half an hour to like proper sync it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I usually just keep it endlessly rolling once I can get it in sync. If it's in sync, it's all right, and I, but I have to keep it rolling, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and how do you put it in sync then? How do you get it in sync? What's it, is the starting and stopping? Uh, uh... Well, well, I made like the mistake that I have like uh, uh, I thought it was a good idea when I started buying modular to buy like a, a MIDI clock that I can sort of a completely shift like around the clock it receives, you know, and yeah. also double double it on speed, etc. Uh, and it's amazing, but it's like it's not very precise, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that, that's also why I love it because if I like uh, you just show, showed like the granular, and I have, like I have the mutable instruments clouds. It's also like a granular thing. Yeah, yeah, clouds also granular. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the cool thing, I, I think when my uh, clock sends it sends stuff to like the mutable instruments clouds, it's like so crappy and <laughs> unpredictable. Yeah, it sounds like noise. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's very it's random, cool. right? You have this random, like this, I think this, this uh, 
Uh, it goes on the beat. It has like a quantized thing or like a one sixteenth, one eighth. But it's like you know, you can, if you play with this, it's like yeah, jumping. yeah, 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 crazy. I know the cloud. There's also like this native instruments uh, emulation from it, which is cool. I've played around with it. It's like uh, ah, this one is this the one that uh, that Niels has as well. Yeah. Or, and should I call you Johannes or Niels? You know, I, I get. I just call me Niels. My name is Niels, and Johannes is like Johannes is like my second name. Yeah. But uh, I never, like... I never knew. I, I never knew until you took the yeah. moniker Johannes on. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's my second second name, and I didn't I didn't want to go like uh, DJ Niels. You know, it's like it, I didn't like it. DJ Niels. But I wanted something like that. <laughs> I want something that gives like my own name, you know. I make like personal stuff now. I don't want to. Uh, how do you say it? I don't want to pretend it's something else. I just do no. stuff I do, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's. That's why I wanted to have my own name for it. Uh. Yeah, cool. I really, I really like it. I never knew, but it's it's cool because also the whole um, uh, um, sad girl thing, the the more uh, techno stuff, the mobile trip, and now this is like I think your final station when you're oh uh, yeah oh you never know of course, but uh, you know yeah, I think I, I, never know. <laughs> I really like that you do like more the, the German bass stuff, but also like a super banging house or or more techno uh, inspired stuff, and it all sounds really raw, and maybe that also has to do with your workflow that it sounds it sounds like honest music to me you know it's not conforming to any any uh, ex expectation that one might have from Johannes or yeah. from Niels or whatever you know it's it's totally free yeah. of this and I I know that you've been uh, yeah you've been looking for this like any artist actually is searching for this and uh, and I'm really glad that you found it man it's like uh, every time you send me like another pack of tracks i'm like ah yes <laughs> you know it's like you can really hear you're having fun in creating your sound and with no uh, no you know just like a life in the clouds was also a bit like this i think life in the clouds was also a bold statement uh about about the music uh you know that you at that point is what's the same kind of feeling so all right i'm yeah, getting emotional yeah. i'm gonna play i'm gonna play <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna play dubby trippy because i like dubby here it comes. Yeah, also, like the track titles are like uh, I don't know if they're like forever. You know, I don't know if they're like uh, if they, if the tracks will come out if the, these titles will well, still I, be I on like, it. I, don't I like the I like oh oh there because I like the one that's called Multi Stoner. <laughs> I already know why. Actually, I, I have a hunch. That, that, that one is for Wayne from uh, from Malta. Like he's my he's my Maltese friend and he's like through a Multi Stoner. You know, I, know, I yeah. thought he was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought he would like this track. That's why it's called Multi Stonery. Uh, cool. Okay, so. but we're gonna listen to W Trippy because I like W. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Be back in a sec. <laughs> yeah, lachen we. Ja, lachen we dan dit. Kijk, het is alleen jammer. Ik, ik zat te denken als ik Facebook aanzet, dan heb je vast zo'n loop al, weet je wel. Of zo. Ja, wel toch? That the mic was still going but yeah we're, we're just discussing the music <laughs> so yeah it's great i really like the delays in this uh this like it's like uh, it's like falling off you know like i like delays which are not so synced you know if you don't sync delays and they're like swinging a bit this is cool yeah 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 well i did um i i also use like a lot of pedals for this yeah so the the, the i think the delay on this that one is like the boss delay oh yeah yeah and what I also like is like uh, in the middle of the track, like just uh, 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 tune like the timing once, you know, so it like sort of wobbles once. Ah, yeah, cool. I, like a little. I, 
Yeah, and it's like uh, it sounds so good on this pedal. It's like uh, I, I think I even made some tracks with it. I don't know, but I think I even made like tracks with just the pedal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's like it's like self oscillating. It's like an amazing thing. Yeah. If you buy a pedal, buy this one yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember. The, I also bought it uh, because of your uh, advice. And also, I remember now. I have the Nordlead uh, V2, right? The Nordlead 2. And uh, I remember you came to my place when I was still living in 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 Horn uh, Horn. And you came and we made a track and you said, oh yeah, give me this Nordly. And you put like a noise uh, oscillator, like, whoosh, you're just using the filter and the noise. Oh, this is great. And this Nordly, you're just like jamming this fucking filter. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like the basis of our of our um, track, you know, and therefore yeah, uh, talking yeah. about noise again, noise is like, it really glues your whole track together, you know? And uh, yeah, we're getting really a lot of compliments, by the way. This was a whole bunch of awesome. I know Lighty, um, uh, it's Nikesh, and he uh, sh he sent me a link today to his live set. He's playing tomorrow, actually, at uh, 12 o'clock. Nikesh, maybe you can drop a link in the comments. And he, I also heard a bit of dub influences uh, in his uh, sound, so I can imagine that he likes dubby trippy. Uh, we also have a question. Uh, waarmee maakt Niels een pet? With what does Niels, or aka Johannes, makes his pads? Well, I got like uh, two favorites. I got more, like more synths. I got. Oh like, wait, I have the pictures. I have the pictures from the synths. So let me see. I can. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, this this is better. Oh, wait, I got like the Corded Micro X again. I love like digital crappy synths. You know, we have like a crappy synth, and you run it through some pedals. It's like it becomes its own synth. If you know what I mean, you never heard anything like it. <laughs> so. Uh, Micro X is like my holy grail for things. It's like it's so super crappy. It's uncontrollable. The knobs, everything sucks, but the sound is like I love it, man. Yeah. So it, it's like a mix, and I got like the uh, Korg Wave Station, yeah. and uh, I think a lot of people use it as a plugin. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's it's also like uh, it has like uh, the, the, uh, the editing possibilities are like so cheesy that if you like, it's like a uh, Russian roulette. You just <laughs> flip on some. <laughs> It's like, like, okay, whatever, it's man. Like this is cool, it's like you know? Russian roulette. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> you, know? you never know what you're gonna get, you know. And it's like, uh, uh, um, uh, um, also like the the, the the wave station is like uh, the X Files tune is made on it. Uh, cool. Twin Peaks, the Twin Peaks Peaks tune, and they're all like just presets in it, you yeah, know. Yeah, so you cool. can just that tune, you know. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, very cool. Nice. That's, that's yeah. I, I know that you made these pads, and actually, you sample these pads into the Novation <coughs> circuit, right? Where do you uh, yeah. make a loop of them? So you play a chord and you sample that into the circuit, right? That's what, like, at least yeah, yeah. I was at your place. Like I can't remember, maybe a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Gerard also asked about the circuit, and I. Uh, uh, it's it's also like a cool synth, but uh, I especially use it as like a sequencer. Yeah. It has like a monophonic and a polyphonic synth, and it has like a, also like a sampler option, so you can put in some like a like a sample pad or some hi hats or whatever. Yeah. And it also has like a very nice filter to it, so uh, uh, it's very crunchy. I, re I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah the filter is in a nice position. That's why because I also bought the Novation base station because of you, <laughs> you know, from yeah. Nuno yeah. because Nuno didn't like it, so I bought his, <laughs> and it's actually really cool because the Novation stuff. I really like the way they they designed their interfaces. They're they're like, uh, you know, it's very easy, easy done. Like, very intuitive. Yeah, yeah, you know, you don't have to think. It's like, wow, you can jam those those buttons. So that's the same with the, with the circuit, you would say, right? Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. Yeah, sure. We have another one. It says, hey, Camille and Niels, I really like your God Needs EP. It's your EP on uh, Sohaso, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. The one with the Thanks. bird. Yeah, I really like it. I have the vinyl and I'm in love with the soul and the rawness of it. Send an image. May I ask what kind of studio monitors you have? Ah, I think Adam's, right? Yeah, it's Adam uh, A7X. Uh, and I got him like, uh, uh, for, uh, I traded him with a friend of mine. And I, uh, I used to have like, I, I think you remember. I had this Peter. like, huge, yeah. I had, yeah, with Peter, I had this huge monitoring set with like a big subwoofer. And yeah. it drove all my neighbors crazy. And yeah. Peter wanted like a set of like that to drive his neighbors crazy. And yeah. uh, I was a normal set. So I traded it with him. And yeah. I think I got like seven years now so yeah, i remember the trade yeah and i remember also that the the previous speakers you were huge you were really happy with them you said wow these these are really but oh yeah but the same the same we have here actually in uh, under the studio is that the um subwoofer uh we, he has a subwoofer but he just removed it because having the sub just 
just messes up your whole uh like your whole acoustics you know like uh, as yeah, many yeah. of you know you see all the the absorbers hanging in, in Niels's room and also here absorbers are super easy you can make them yourself you know with some foam or with some towels and build uh, absorbers at least until 500 hertz you'll be fine but bass is ridiculous we have a big bass trap in the back here it's a bass trap of 60 uh, centimeters filled with rock wool you know that really helps but this low end is really hard and if you're going to put a subwoofer in your room it's going to be like one big like uh yeah base base uh how do you call it base sure. box yeah <laughs> all right so we have more people saying uh the secret is great in circuit that's cool if you have a question for niels let us know uh i'm gonna play another track now i'm gonna play the multi stoner <laughs> uh, let's listen Ooh, let, let's listen to it Cool, the Maltese stoner. So you made this as an O to your uh, Maltese friend. Yeah, man. Yeah, cool. True, Maltese stoner Wayne. Yeah, <laughs> I really like the cover. That's like this floating meals coming like. <laughs> yeah, you you said semi son like some. Uh... Uh, like videos with music and I was like I don't I don't want to watch him at a st uh, let him watch it still you know yeah. for a minute or so yeah, 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 yeah. so I just like uh, yeah, yeah I'm asking, entertain you I'm asking everybody <laughs> to do this and uh, maybe cool thing next week I've got just Butler online and um, oh uh, yeah we've always we're always geeking out when he's in Holland you know then we go for dinner and talk about uh, about making music and he's got the culture vulture I don't know if you know the termio termionic Culture. Yeah, 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 it's on my wish list yeah, for sure. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I thought so. So he's also he's also really into this uh, this hardware stuff. And he actually before the before the the whole thing started, he just moved all his stuff, his absorbers from the studio to his house. And he actually found out that being at home, like you are as well, because you never had your studio somewhere else, as as far as oh yeah, once. Yeah, at once. Yeah, like in an old jail, yeah. but it was like, yeah. like the, the, vibe, the vibes were so bad, man. I uh, yeah, the, I didn't like it. Yeah, the old jail. You're like, oh, <laughs> oh it's like it's so nasty. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, but also he found out that being at home is is kind of nice. I always had it at home, and uh, my roommate obviously had it as a home as well. Always, um, I actually never tried to have my studio somewhere else. But uh, yeah, you know, many people I speak to, some really like it to go somewhere, and oh, there now it has to happen. I'm gonna go there and make music. But I kind of like to wake up in the middle of the night and go like, you know what, I'm gonna make. I I, I once woke up, which is a track that actually Duncan um, uh, released. Um, I did, I didn't do anything with. It. I just sent him the idea. It was just I was laying in bed. I was learning piano at the time, and I was thinking like, oh, I just learned A minor. What well, what if I do this key and then this key and then play? Oh, I wanna know. I wanna know how it sounds. So I went to to the next door where I had my studio in horror and I played I was like ah and I ended up making this whole track <laughs> going to bed yeah, going yeah. to bed at six in the morning well at least I went to bed back then <laughs> but uh but you know when, you, when, you, when your studio is like a nice place to be in you know that's like so important yeah. like I, I like to have my, like my small lights and have like my well, you know whatever I got so much shit laying around here man like uh whatever oh, you know yeah, yeah i saw this on the picture yeah yeah, yeah it's nice to have yeah, just, just put plants in yeah. your studio and yeah. just make it a nice place to be in you know so yeah, like that, whatever minions <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. And also, Duncan has all the lights here, which are cool. You know, I always had like lots of lights in my studio. Make it fun, like funny gadgets uh, to make it a place where you can chill. Because I think a lot of music will come from you being chilled. You know, it's not. Yeah. It shouldn't be something. Yeah. It shouldn't be something business. Oh, I gotta make a new track for my release. Or right. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's it's important to. Well, at least now you can't really tour, but to get get content that goes out there but i think it's also really important just to have fun and just enjoy the ride and just have having yeah. fun being in your space making music and learning new stuff you know i think that's that's the most important thing than just to be busy with the end result of i need to be uh, famous or i need to be on this label or my sound needs to be like this you know there's just make music and try to make it as best as you can and learn more and if you yeah, if you have music that inspires you, just uh, just try to make. Yeah, it. but I think also when you like make start start to make music in the beginning, there's like a lot of excitement. But you 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 will come at a certain point that you're like uh, you need to want to make it the next step, and things will become like frustrating. And yeah, yeah. and I think that's like the point that you like got like got to see these frustrations as like a, a sort of gift. You know, I got to solve this shit. Yeah. You know, to, to to get further. You yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the I, same. Yeah. I, I bought yeah. and sold so many gear, you know, it cost me so much money, but, and it was such, such a hard school, you know, yeah, but yeah. I, 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 you know, it, it got me, got me so far that I can, I can now like, I can push play, I can record a track and it's done in like six minutes, you know, yeah, yeah. that's what I always wanted, uh, yeah, all these 20 years that I've been making music. Yeah, just so. jam and having fun, you know, but in the, in yeah. the best, I also didn't know, you know, until I made this whole live set, I was like, hey, this, this works, you know, but I, mean, I think, I think it's just important just to have fun, you know, hey, Lucien is in the house, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Lucien. Lucien. <laughs> You you should also come in the in the show once. I'll 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 give you a call this week because you also had like a lot of gear and stuff. Lucien's also yeah, also like a, like a, a gear hat, you know. So it's it's really cool to, to have all these things. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to touch upon is this um, tape deck that you have. You gave me one once, and I recorded some tracks on it. Unfortunately, I think I messed up the tape hats back then or so. But when I I, I, I still got it. It's still here. I, yeah. I still need to repair. Yeah, it's, so. it's mono, eh? right? So it's but you can still use it. And I put a yeah. track on it, and I recorded the track onto the tape, and I listened to it, and it sounded exactly like the high end became super silky, and it sounded like really nice. So what would you think the benefits? I have an old tape deck, like an old cassette tape deck as well. Would you think that would help? For would you advise this to people just to use this this kind of? Uh, I, I also like use it like as a tool uh, when I make music. Like I said, I I, I want to have my, my my stuff like it has to sound like ready. I don't have to do anything after it's been recorded. You know, I record it as is and it has to be done. You know, yeah. And uh, the tape machine can like give like synths or your drums or whatever. It can give it like a sort of well, you just said it like sort of balanced uh, sound in it. Even when it's like a bit oversteered or whatever, the, the tape sort of makes it warm and it will solve it a bit, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I use it like, also as like an effect, but um, also when I got a track done, I will record it on like master tape uh, on the same machine. Yeah. Just to see how, see how it will sound when a good master engineer will uh, record it with like a Refox or whatever, it will sound much better. But at least it gives me an idea of how uh, the, the track will sound when it's uh, uh, mastered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's super oh. nice. It's super nice to use this uh, this this mod this tape. You know, I, I remember that it sounded exactly like I, I wanted it to sound. You know, that I uh, like wow, this is super. I don't know, just the, especially the highs. It removed all the digital feeling from, yeah. from the track, which is really cool. Yeah, nice yeah, man. Sure. And. Um, yeah, so so. But it's, it's it's like a crappy thing, you know. You yeah. can buy it for like one hundred euros. A, pl a plugin will a good plugin will cost the same, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, I think people just if I look at the wiring, people are just like, oh no, all these wires, you know, it's a lot of work. The MIDI and uh, the audio wiring, you know, it's it's just like. Yeah, it's, yeah. But it's uh yeah, it's cool to, to to see how you work, you know, just like the different the different setup as as uh, yeah people work in DAWs oh. nowadays. I know that Lucien has a has a cool. He's, he's got a nice channel called Analog Kitchen for the people that wants to check it out. Analog Kitchen is cool. He's got all this hardware as well, telling you how to how to play with it. And I think this is nice, you know, the playing factor or like the having fun factor in the studio. And uh, yeah, you know, and I see to, to, to look at your studio, uh, uh, Niels, it's, it's really nice to see how it evolved, you know, from how it was and to, to like the nice and sort of tidy place it, it became, actually. 
And, um, yeah, well, I got, I got like the scenes stacked up to the walls now. It's like it, I, I think I need to sell some more stuff. Yeah, so. There's one on the side there the, with the broke. Is that still the one with the broken key? Yeah, is the and Sonic? I got an Sonic. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. like uh, uh, like an analog piano from 1972. I got here. Yeah. And I got like a, a, an old Yamaha synth, and I got a, a, a Yefe synth. It's like a very rare thing. Also, it's, it sounds amazing, a bit Uno-ish. And I think I think I want to keep that. It's like it's very rare. Yefe so, uh, is a Roland uh, Yefc or something. No, no, it's it's literally a Yefc oh, uh, keyboard. It's, it's like the brand. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to have a Roland JV1010, so I was a bit confused with uh, with that one. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's from JV, so it's like a high fi manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, one's like made a synth, and it's like it sounds it sounds amazing. It's really cool. Yeah. All right. Ah, look. Ah, thanks for the shout out, guys. That's great. Hey, um, Niels, what's going on? Uh, is there what are you doing in Corona time? You know, you you're. you're Making a lot of music, apparently. Is there a lot of music coming out? Did you, can you say something of music that's going to come out? Or did you make three albums? What's uh, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> well, I got my, my EP on RFR is coming out, like, I think next month. The promo will be out in, I think, a week or so. And it's like a, a final and a digital version with six tracks. And the final has, like, four tracks. Yeah. Uh, I got, like, Macro Dub that's coming up on Something Happening Somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there's an other EP I signed also at, at the uh, Sohaso, but it's like uh, it, it's something new. I, will, I, I, I think I even said too much already, but uh, okay. that's uh -oh. just, that, <laughs> yeah. uh -oh. uh, that's another one. And I, I uh, also made a lot of like like we said already. I made a lot of tracks, and I uh, think I will set up my own band camp and put up stuff like that yeah, on it. You know? Yeah, I think that's the way now, man. It's just to have a band camp and and then sell yeah sell your music there and have people support you directly. You know. Yeah, but also like to make like the, I, I got so much output at the moment, and I think it will be like it uh, such a waste to keep this on my hard drive, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, maybe I, I will sign another few EPs from it, but for now I was like maybe I'll just put like twenty or forty tracks at once on on Bandcamp and <laughs> just, just let people figure out if they like it, you know. That's nice. So, you uh, should make nice artwork for all of them, you know, just to make it nice that every every one has a really cool like the artwork you have here. Every time this news flows on top of it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Shall we listen to one more news also? Yeah. Let's do the... Uh, we got the Dicke Groover. Let's do the Dicke Groover. Okay, okay. Hey, you're you're you you're gone. Ah, there you are. Oh, <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. I was stealing a bit. I really like this one. This is like is really dark techno. It reminds me of all the paradigm stuff. This is more your sad girl kind of Johannes. <laughs> yeah, 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 indeed. Yeah, yeah. All right, I have a question for you. If you had, it's by unknown. I think it's uh, it's uh, Lucien. If you had to pick one device out of your setup to work with, what would it be and why? Uh, I think the base station, base station two. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, a base station is like, especially like the, the FX twin uh, 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 version they got on it now. It's software version. 
it's like amazing. You can make like a full track on it. You can make drums, kicks, whatever, and it's like pff, it's so sick. Yeah. I got a so I got so many years, man. It's completely battered. You know, all my knobs are broken. The the filter is like an endless rotary faders. Novation, if you're listening, give me a new one. Yeah, yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> so, yeah, it's completely shit. But I I, I even uh, <laughs> send it like to Novation for repairs because I can't miss it. You know. Yeah. If I send it to them and they will keep it like two weeks, I will be lost for two yeah. weeks, you know? So. Yeah, I also have to figure out. I, I, I haven't used it because I moved and I came here and I haven't actually had my studio. So I, I lent it out. But the guy I lent it out to, which was Jeroen, actually, he never used it. And uh, and now it, uh, now it's, it, the filter doesn't work. So I have to check it out. So Novation, if you're looking, uh, I want to have everything for free because I stream. We need to. <laughs> we need to. <laughs> But uh, yeah, but cool. Yeah, I thought you would pick the the base station, you know, and uh, it's it's a really nice device. I I've played a lot, and the ar the ARP on the base station is great, and all the dif different settings you have the thirty two different like patterns, but you can make it so great. You can play your own your own ARP, and it will then ARP what you've played. I really like that that feature, you know. Yeah. Also, uh, I I I had this idea for like many years, but I never tried. Uh, I I hadn't tried it like until until a couple of weeks ago. Um, you can also like uh, use the arpeggiator to like uh, trigger drums oh yeah to, so instead of sending it notes you just connect it to like a tr8 or whatever and just you use like the arpeggiator to trigger the drums and you will have like crazy rhythms you will won't believe your ears yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't you know it's like yeah it's crazy yeah i used to i used like uh during my life set that i did a paradigm uh i think it's two years ago or so i sent like an, an, a sequencer to my nordlead because the nordlead sequencer is really bad but i could send it like uh arps from um from my computer, but in the studio, I would send the base station to the north and then use the base station ARP to trigger the north, which is great. I have some cool recordings on uh, on my hard drive with just me playing around like <laughs> with the ARP for like minutes after an end. So that's really cool. Yeah, man, cool. So we have another one. Wayne Works says, uh, Johannes, the best ever. That's great. I don't know who Wayne, do you know who Wayne Works is? There's a multi stoner guy. Oh, Wayne. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. So full circle, full man. Circle. Full, full circle. <laughs> We're there. Yeah, great. <laughs> no, it's cool. Now, well, this is a great time for me to thank you for your time and for your efforts in making music and for being such a good friend for many years. You know, it's really an honor to know you and I've learned so much from you. And now I get the, the chance to teach other people uh, with lessons in life, which is actually also for me was a point in time that I was struggling with my sound and what do I want to do? I will, wow, who am I? <laughs> you know, that sort of stuff. And yeah, yeah. Lessons in Life was born. And uh, yeah, you you helped me a lot during my um, my 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 time uh, in making music. So uh, I'm glad we can share this and we'll share this for many, many years. And uh, Yeah, man. Like, bye. And thanks for the opportunity. And uh, thanks, everybody who, uh, who's watching and responding. Yeah, that's uh, very cool, Johannes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you can watch you can watch the show back. It will be on YouTube and Twitch and uh, and all the stuff and on Facebook, I guess. And uh, next week I'm back with Josh Butler, so that's really cool. And uh, I've got so many things planned. We've got uh, Luna Lutmela coming, Koitsige Collective, uh, Rob Hess is joining me. You know, um, yeah, m oh. many people joining me. And uh, I'm gonna ask Lucien as well to join me for one. I'm gonna ask Roland to join me for one. He was earlier in the show as well, so. Yeah, a lot of more of this stuff is coming. So uh, thank you for being here, Niels. And um, cool, man. Uh, Thanks for the invite once again. You're welcome, man. And uh, Yo. see you, see you later. <laughs> Yo, bye bye. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know how to hang you up. Let me do this. So, everybody, thank you for joining in. Uh, Lessons in life. You can follow me at YouTube, Twitch, Facebook. Uh, we got the new new courses are starting. I have the uh, beginners course starting. Uh, if you know people that want to start making music, uh, I have the online focus beginners course, which is eight weeks, actually nine, because I do a ninth week after three months. I have a special price. Uh, it's super cheap at the moment for an eight week course. So feel free to go to lessonsinlife.com and check the online focus beginners course or the advanced course. And um, thank you for tuning in. And I hope uh, you enjoyed. Next week I'm back with Josh Butler. Uh, hopefully my new site will be online then as well. So lots of cool stuff coming. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed it. And um, uh, <laughs> Jerry came from the memes. Oh, we forgot the memes. 
I will put some more memes on Instagram. And I'll ask, uh, <laughs> I'll ask uh, Niels to do the same because uh, yeah, memes is life, you know, or life is a meme basically. Yeah, it's my new hobby basically, finding memes <laughs> on uh, on Instagram. So Jerry, I'm gonna rock the memes this week for you. <laughs> okay, so everybody, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next week, same time. Later. <laughs>